After a survey found that 78% of Americans still drink iced coffee when the weather's cold, Panera Bread decided to promote their unlimited coffee subscription program with the Iced and Toasty Bread Bowl Glove. A glove that looks like it is made of bread. A drink holder that's meant to keep your hand insulated from the iced coffee on the inside and the cold weather from the outside. People have called it disgusting, bizarre, a what are we even doing nightmare. But I'll tell you what I call it, a food theory episode. Internet, welcome to Food Theory, where today it's getting nice and yeasty. Ooh, what? Is that I was, bad? I was gonna say nice and toasty. Toasty, I think, is a good way to go. Toasty yeast. <sighs> this is a weird one, friends. So earlier this year, Panera Bread, the company that's known for selling all sorts of delicious baked goods, went on social media to promote a product they call iced and toasty bread bowl gloves. Take a look. It's a bread glove. <laughs> <laughs> So is that true? It, what? It, yes. Is that actually true? Yes. Unlike the KF console, which doesn't exist yet, this is actually a thing. Well, sort of. They're not actually made of bread like I had hoped. Computer, enhance. Enhance again. Enhance a third time. As you can see from the stitching, it's actually a padded cloth hand covering made to look like a real-life Panera bread bowl, which somehow makes the whole concept even more insane. And yet, the moment I first laid eyes on this bread bowl glove and quietly scoffed at it, even in that moment I knew Panera's marketing campaign had worked on me. Theorists, I wanted an iced and toasty bread bowl glove. Nay, I needed an iced and toasty bread bowl glove. And not only that, but I realized I knew just the person to help me put that iced and toasty bread bowl glove to the test. The person with the single iciest hands in the entire planet, my lovely wife, Stephanie. Stephanie's hands are like literal blocks of ice at the end of her arms. Yeah, I can actually, I can chill drink with my hands practically. You don't want to lick them because your tongue will get stuck to them. Is that gross? Is that gross? Come on! I'm glad we're doing it's, a lot of takes here. It's a Christmas story joke! Okay, point is, Stephanie's hands are always cold, but when it came to getting our ice-cold hands on an iced and toasty bread bowl glove, well, we got a bit stuck. See, Panera only made 450 of the bread bowl gloves to give away, which, side note, really feels to me like they ordered 500 and kept 50 of them for themselves, but hey, that's just a conspiracy theory. I signed us up for a chance to win one on their website. Heck, without telling them, I signed up the entire theorist crew on the website to try and win one. If anyone on the crew asks why they're suddenly getting a lot of discount codes for bread, don't tell them. But alas, it was not meant to be. We were not selected as one of the 450 winners. We didn't get a bread bowl glove. And I couldn't find anyone reselling them online either because, well, kind of makes sense. Why would you ever sell something this incredible? But if Panera thinks that that's going to stop me from making this episode, well, they've got themselves another thing coming. This episode is happening. I don't care what anyone else says. If Panera refuses to supply me with a fake bread bowl glove, then they're going to supply me with a real bread bowl glove. That's right, theorists. It's time for some good old-fashioned DIY food theory style. Today, we are going to Panera. We are going to acquire an egregious amount of bread bowls, and then we're going to transform them into literal bread gloves. Slash into, koozies. Yeah, slash, slash koozies. koozies yeah. <laughs> one part bread bowl, one part glove, one part koozie, just to see what is the insulation power of bread? This is so stupid. Can you actually use bread as a glove? Food theory. Do we want to do one single bread bowl or do we want two hands? I think we one, need- One bowl on each hand. I think we need to test both. I think we need both. So there you go, friends. This is probably the stupidest episode that this channel has had. Nope, we ate a Christmas tree. Second stupidest episode <laughs> that this channel has ever had. Yes. I but love this channel. also high carb and probably a lot more delicious than the tree episodes. I'm really excited. I just, I really love to eat bread bowls. I'm, I'm hoping that this episode doesn't like completely ruin whatever fitness journey I'm on. I was really adamant about doing this episode. Everyone on the team was like, except for Stephanie. Stephanie saw the light in what I was doing. She's like, I get it. Everyone else is like, you're insane, Matt. Please. Let me know down in the comments below. Was I right? The rest of the team is doubting me for this one, guys. It's, it's, it's you. Me and you and me. This is it. This is it. This is the team right here. Let's show Jason and the rest of the team how wrong they were and how great this idea is. Because it's great. 
Let's go to Panera. I hope. To Panera! So my endlessly supportive wife and I hopped in the car and set out to locate a whole lot of Panera bread bowls. Which, gotta say, was easier said than done because we needed them uncut. And we were just looking to swing by and grab some of the bread that you use to make the bread bowls, but we don't need any of the soup or anything. It quickly became apparent that if we wanted enough uncut bread bowls for all the experiments that we had in mind, we were gonna have to stop by a few different Panera bread locations, and that wasn't our only hurdle. Ooh, I don't know if my hand can fit in there, but how is this even fitting soup? Yeah, well, these are really small. We might have to okay, get something bigger. Well, that's what she said. So we just got our first four bread bowls, and uh, already a problem seems to be developing, which is, these are pretty teeny. Yeah, they're smaller than we thought. Like, How are you supposed to get your hand in there and a, and a drink? Yeah, you're definitely not getting both. So uh, as a backup, because of that, we also picked up a full sourdough loaf, which is significantly larger and it's sort of oblong. Yeah, so that you might could have a hand in one end, cup in the other. You're not getting a lot of soup in this. Right? But there, just that's it? like three tablespoons of soup this in is, there. This is literally like the equivalent of like a juggling ball. Yeah. Right. But I can do this. No, don't do that. I, don't I beg do that. No, no, I want to eat them later. You can still eat them. Five second rule. Uh, That's another food theory for another day. No! Oh! <laughs> I did it. Onward to Panera 2. Nope! And at the second Panera location, we found exactly what we were after. And we owe it all to a loyal theorist. The Mega XL Sourdough Loaf. This thing is maybe the most beautiful piece of bread that I've ever bought. Looks incredible. It's only unfortunate that I'm just gonna be ruining it by shoving my hands into it. <laughs> what a shame. Also, Cloud, our cashier, was a theorist fan. So shout out to Cloud, our Panera expert who guided us on our little bread journey. She said she would watch this video. I told her I appreciated that. <laughs> At long last, our bread haul was complete and it was finally time to get down to business. Matthew, stop juggling that bread. We have to cut it open and stick your hand in. Ah! I'm just proud of myself. <laughs> okay, so there may have been a detour or two, but eventually we got all the loaves cut into bread gloves, bread koozies, and bread glove koozie combos. Then it was time to have some fun with temperature and high-tech gadgetry. To prove that, you know, we're using actual science here, we have our thermometer, our distance thermometer, as well as our thermal camera. Yes, I went out and bought a thermal camera for this. It costs a lot of money, so yes. I hope someone watches this episode. Please watch this video to justify the cost of this thermal camera. Again, remember, it's the three of us. It's us, everyone doubted me in this episode. Don't let me down, internet. I need your support with this one. <laughs> I told everyone this is gonna be great. So this is actually gonna give us a, an accurate reading of what temperature this is at right now. So oh, right it's nice and blue. So, so this is currently at around 45 degrees Fahrenheit. Yep. How cool is that? Here, how warm is my hand? Your hand is as dead as ever. It is, wow, it is shockingly cold actually, 80 degrees. 80 degrees. Whereas your body is super yellow and red behind you, your hand is super cold. Wow, you really do have dead hands. I told you. Wow, how's Look my at hand? scientific proof. Look at my hand. Now, going into this, Steph and I predicted that sourdough bread would work as a good thermal insulator. After all, materials like styrofoam are great insulators because they have so many tiny air pockets. And thanks to fermentation, bread has air pockets galore. First, we put our sourdough koozies to the test. We poured equally cold ice water into two glasses. We placed one glass in a koozie and left the other glass uninsulated. We waited for the ice to melt in both glasses, and in the end, we found that the water in the koozie glass did indeed stay slightly colder longer. Okay, so this ice beverage is at 4647 right now. Yep. And over here we have 45. 46. Which means it insulated it better. We ran a similar experiment with hot water and got similar results. The hot water kept in the sourdough koozie remained slightly warmer. 102, 102 103. And over here we're at 104, 105. 105! It's slightly higher! But I didn't really make a believer out of Stephanie until she tried on one of the bread gloves for herself. We measured her hand at 80 degrees before she put the glove on. Then she plunged her bread gloved hand into a bucket of ice water for a couple of minutes. Go. Okay. Oh, this is lovely. I could keep this in here forever. Yeah, I feel nothing. And when she pulled her hand out, it was actually warmer than it was before it went into the ice bath. Okay, yeah, pop it yep. out. Wow, your hand 
is actually warmer. It's at 80, but it's skewing higher on the 80 scale. No it's like way! 81, 82. Okay, there we go. There it is. So it completely insulates against very short term ice exposure. But deep down, we both knew that we hadn't stumbled into anything that shocking. The fact that sourdough bread acts as an insulator wasn't gonna suddenly break the internet. And more importantly, it wasn't gonna make all the other members of Team Theorist realize just how wrong they were to doubt me about this episode. No, my friends, the time had come for the head to head matchup that would prove that I was right all along. The match up that we'd all been waiting for, Bread Glove versus Glove Glove. These are my favorite mittens. They are excellent insulators. We're going to see if bread can actually stack up to these puppies. All right, Matthew's going in at 87. It's like Pac-Man's eating my hand. Um, not we should put little googly eyes on it right there. Oh, we should put googly eyes. Can we get googly eyes? That would be so funny. Yeah, definitely. All right, here's this, and then here's, should have done this in the other order. Oh, here, I can help you. And I'm gonna try to hold the, the same hand position, actually. Okay. So I'm gonna hold, because in both, you're kind of balled up. Stephanie actually prefers mittens to gloves because it allows her to keep all her fingers together. And when your hand produces literally no heat, just nothing. having her fingers together gives her like a modicum of extra thermal insulation. It's my only shot. Sometimes gloves make it worse. Is that relatable at all to anyone? So we'll resume in five minutes. Fast forward montage. Five minutes later. Here we go. Okay. This is bread hand. Oh wow, you're at 93.94 oh, with that bread hand. Oh yeah, here's That's that. That's looking, and the back is at 89. Okay, 93.94. Wow, okay. I'm impressed, okay. My my mitten hand is sweating. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh wow, okay, yeah. Uh, that's at 95, 96, and the back is at 94, 90, it 92. It is so hot right yeah. now, I can tell you for certain, the mitten worked better than the bread, which again, is not what I was hoping to title this video. I was hoping to title this video, Bread Gloves Better Than Regular Gloves. Almost as if bread wasn't intended to be used as gloves. I think we need to wrap this one up. Right, we're gonna wrap friends. this up. We're gonna, we're gonna go back downstairs and wrap this up, but not before I have a cool sip from my chilled bread bowl glass. Mmm, <sighs> that's some cold water. That is some equally cold water. <laughs> we wasted hundreds of dollars and an entire day filming this. But as we trudged back downstairs to our filming room, I became inspired. Okay, so maybe it was just an overwhelming dread of having to admit to the team that I was wrong, but whatever it was, I realized the sourdough bread glove deserved one last shot at greatness. Sure, it didn't hold up in our kitchen lab tests, but what about a field test? After all, temperature tests don't tell you squat about how it functions as a glove. So before I put the final nail in its coffin, I decided I owed the bread bowl glove a chance to prove itself out in the real world. Come on, let's <laughs> Yeah, it turns out that bread isn't exactly what you want on your hands when you're shopping. Go figure. In fact, it turns out that bread glove drink holders aren't even ideal for, you know, holding drinks. It is literally breaking apart. It's not built to sustain weight. The bread is too moist. Steph opted not to join me on my Hail Mary trip to Target. Don't really understand why she wouldn't want to walk around with me in public, but it was a choice that she made, and frankly, it was the right choice. So one other unexpected consequence of the bread bowl uh, is that... It doesn't hold up well. And I feel bad because it's literally crumbling around the store as I go. So I'm having to clean up all the crumbs of all the places where I'm leaving marks. It's literally, I'm leaving a trail of breadcrumbs so anyone can find where I'm going. Uh, I was insulated for as long as it held up, but now this is what I'm left with. Shame. Sorry, bread glove. Not this time. Okay, so to recap, bread glove koozies don't hold up under normal wear and tear. They also don't insulate all that great. Bread gloves are bulky, and they really, really make you realize how useful having thumbs are. They're also not exactly conducive to making a YouTube video. Glass sink, ready? Ready, one, two, three. <laughs> Stupid bread experiment. Take five. But you know what none of today's tests could account for? The way bread gloves make you feel when you wear them. Yeah, and no, this is not me trying desperately to prove the rest of team theorists wrong, okay? I stand by this. Every syllable theorists, I wore bread gloves around a very nice target for an entire afternoon. I mean, just look at me go. You cannot tell me that I'm not pulling that look off. So no, I will not be taking an L on this episode. I am happy to report that bread gloves do indeed deliver. I was right. Team theorists 
was wrong. No, I will not be taking questions. It's called fashion. Look it up. Seriously, though, I will say this for Panera's Bread Bowl gloves. Not only do they make you feel like a supermodel, they make you feel like devouring Panera Bread products. True story, as we were leaving Target post-fabulous photo shoot, I noticed some Panera soup for sale. Maybe it was because I'd been sniffing sourdough for the past 12 hours, but I had a moment of weakness. All the talk of Panera Bread and soups gave us a hankering for one. Yes, I know Steph and I went out of our way to avoid paying for all that soup earlier in the day, but this, this is why Steph needs to keep an eye on me. This is what happens when I go to Target without a chaperone, theorists. It was by no means easy, and I'm not proud of myself, but I bought way too much Panera soup. That evening, Stephanie and I wound up eating all the extra sourdough bread we had lying around the house. Not gonna say how much bread it was, but let's just say that Panera might want to come out with a bread bowl personal trainer in the near future. Congratulations, Panera, you won. You sold a bit more bread and a whole heck of a lot more soup to one shamed, embarrassed, and cold theorist. Yeah, maybe I do take the L on this one. But hey, that's just a transition to me telling you about the sponsor for today's episode, Bright Cellars, the monthly wine subscription that uses a seven-question non-wine snobby quiz to match you to the perfect wine based on your unique tastes. Steph and I have been receiving wine boxes from Bright Cellars for months now, and honestly, it's just fun. I mean, getting a box of wine delivered to your door each month, it's like having 12 birthdays a year. Plus, Bright Cellars lets us rate every wine that we receive, which means that our next delivery is even more perfectly suited to our unique tastes. Not only does Bright Cellars expose us to a bunch of great wines that we probably never would have tried otherwise, but they also include wine education cards that give us background info into the wines that we're drinking. It's boosted my understanding of wine a ton. A year ago, if you asked me, like Bright Cellars asked me what type of wine I like, I would have told you white wine, but it turns out that my tastes are way more specific than that. I like fruity wines. It's true, there's no two ways about it. I like Rieslings with fruit flavors. I like them highly aromatic, and I like pairing them with sourdough, which is good considering we suddenly have a lifetime supply of bread bowls to chow down on. But here's the deal, theorists. A deal that's so hot that you might need a bread glove to handle it. Bright Cellars has given all our subscribers an exclusive 50% off their first six bottle box, plus an additional bonus bottle. That is seven bottles in total. Follow my link below in the description to take the quiz and start understanding your unique preferences as it relates to wine. Just take the opportunity to be more empowered understanding your own unique preferences in the food that you eat and the stuff that you like to drink. It is just a great place to get started. So thank you Bright Sellers for your sponsorship. Thank you guys for giving it a test out at home. And as always, remember, it's all just a theory. A food theory. Bon appetit. <laughs>